Hey everybody, Final Thoughts time for the Expedition to New Dale, and I am very, very happy with this. Longtime fans of the show might remember a few years ago when I did coverage for the first expansion for Oh My Goods, which I think was Revolt in Longsdale, and at the time I just was so over the moon excited with the idea that designer Alexander Fister was pushing, that of bringing narrative into Euro-style gaming, you know, actual storytelling, where if you play through a series of games you have a thread that pulls it all together and means every session contributes towards something bigger and it was wonderful there and I'm so happy to see Alexander continuing to experiment with this uh, because Expedition of New Dale is the literally the third direct chapter in the Oh My Good saga, although there are spin-off series with Tybor the Builder, and I don't know, maybe even Port Royal ties into it somehow, I'm not really quite sure, but all these things coming together to create this universe of gaming, this is not the kind of thing you expect to see in a dry economic simulation, and it works very well here. Now, one thing I think I probably haven't stressed this enough back when I covered you know, uh, the uh, Longsdale expansion and some other times when uh, developers, most notably Alexander Pfister, but a few other ones, are trying to bring storytelling into Euro-style gaming. Please bear in mind, I'm not saying these are going to be winning the Pulitzer for narrative fiction or Hugo Awards or anything like that. It's pretty bare bones. It's pretty straightforward, and that's certainly the case here. Uh, there are a series of events that you will find yourself journeying through. They're pretty simple. You could sum them all up, you know, basically on a page, this entire story. But that's okay. I'm not necessarily wanting or demanding really rich, intricate, you know, deep storytelling. I want rich, intricate, deep gameplay. But having that extra cherry on top, that sense of characters who you get to know, uh, you know, and because who you have a history with, um, you know, it's actually really interesting some of the events that happen here, and thinking back to where some of these characters were literally years ago now when I first encountered them and watched them grow. I, again, they've grown over the course of a series of basically just small paragraphs, you know, story snippets that can fit on one card. So again, it's not rich, but it is something more than just, oh, I just played a game and then I put it back in the box and there was nothing to it other than who won and who lost. You know, the fact that there are there, I have a history that I have played through, and the story is not over yet. Um, I don't know, should I say? I'm going to say it. Folks, this ends with a cliffhanger, which I can only assume means that there is going to be more. Either expansions for New Dale, and Alexander Fister has not done telling his story yet, and I am just over the moon with that. Okay, so I had to get the narrative stuff out of the way. I know a lot of you don't care. You just want to know, well, but the game. Talk about the game. So let's talk about the game. This is a great game uh, because it is built off the back of Oh My Goods, or Royal Goods, as it was originally known, and which I definitely prefer. And Oh My Goods was a great little push-your-luck game. And taking that core formula of um, you know, committing to what it is you want to produce in a given round without perfect knowledge of whether you will succeed at that or not, uh, but, and the, only after you make that commitment in Oh My Goods do you draw the cards, in this game do you pull the assistant tokens and find out if you will pull it off. And that it's kind of a version of Push Your Luck, and it is great. The um, you know, So that core is still here. This is all about creating good production chains. Getting a building that um, will make stuff really cheaply, and then getting another building that can convert the stuff so you can just upgrade, and basically get lots of goods generation kind of for free, kind of, sort of, is very satisfying to pull it off. And like Oh My Goods, when you get to that last round and you get to do a super production phase, it's kind of like the Euro equivalent of a boss fight when all these massive um, things that you've been building up over the whole course of the game just pay off in this big explosive string. If you've set it up building towards that big moment, it is awesome. It was awesome Oh My Goods, it's awesome here. But I'm really surprised. There are a lot of core changes and additions. The biggest one is, I would say, Newdale is more forgiving. And that is because if you made your bet on what you thought you were going to produce and whether you're going to produce heavily or lightly to, you know, to, you know, play it safe or what have you. And then, oh, the flop comes up. In all my goods it was cards here. It's the and uh, in all my goods, if it didn't produce, you got nothing and you wasted a turn and it was 
painful. Here, the game gives you a... If you have enough cards in your hand, you can always ensure that you are going to succeed. You're just going to have to jettison a lot of cards that could be very, very painful and that you were planning on using for something else. I like that a lot. That is a huge improvement. Don't get me wrong. I still love Oh My Goods. Oh My Goods plays in half the time of this. It's okay that it can be a little bit more punishing and even crushing because you're in and out really quick and you're setting up for another game almost immediately. Whereas this is a longer, richer game. And I think having some uh, early failures would feel pretty debilitating knowing that, oh, somebody else succeeded and I just crashed and burned. What am I going to do? Well, it's a lot... You're less likely to crash and burn even if you gamble big. And gambling big can pay off huge in this game. Plus, it gives you more options for gambling than ever before. But I didn't mention this anywhere in the run-through, and it's very important. If you send a worker out to produce goods, and it turns out, well, you, you gambled and failed, and you couldn't do any chain production, you always get something. And this is brilliant. You at least, at the very least, that worker you sent out gets you another card that you draw. And that might be the card you've been waiting for. So no matter what, you always get something. You are never left completely out in the cold. And quite frankly, that one little addition is so brilliant, I kind of feel like it should be retroactively applied back to Oh My Goods to make that a better game. Because this definitely stands on the shoulders of what was already a phenomenal, fun, tight little package card game. And blossoms in front of you. Because this board is not just for keeping track of stuff. There is definitely interesting gameplay that's happening here. Because, well, you know, on, on one level, yeah, almost all of my goods is still over here. Although it's been supplemented with worker placement, of all things. So that makes it richer. But the fact that this game comes with six different boards. And these boards, they are all different. They have different special rules associated with them. Some of them are portraits, some of them are landscape. And, um... You know, you play through these in a narrative campaign, but after the campaign is over, you can just say, hey, you know what, let's just play Chapter 6 again, because I really liked the feature that was in that one. I liked that, uh, you know, and again... Oh, by the way, I'm trying not to spoil. I, I In this demo, all I've done, done is shown you the core of the game. I didn't want to spoil how any of the uh, extra added stuff that comes into the game works, but if you watch, like, I think the last five minutes of my extended gameplay, I actually do say, spoilers! Look out! I'm not spoiling story, but I do show what all these other special tokens are and the different types of cards, so you can get an idea of what the full experience offers. Because, here's something that's very impressive to me. This game, I think, would be a keeper, even if it only had this first chapter. Maybe the first chapter plus the characters, which appear in chapters 2 and exist all the way for the rest of the game. I think there's enough because there's just so much in the way of bonuses. There's so much variety in terms of the events. I think uh, just this could have been a strong enough game, like All My Goods before it. But the fact that you've got six different ways to play, uh, you know, with, with the six different maps, and don't get me wrong, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to oversell it. Some of the maps are subtly different. Some of them have very, very big differences. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to go into details. But it means you've got so much more replayability in here. With the special characters you'll get, and the secret objectives you get, and the different combination of bonus cards that litter the board, and just the variety of different buildings you're going to try and chase after, means it, you just you, you are you had me at the first mission, but then there are eight more missions, um, branching storylines. So you have multiple. You want to play through the full campaign at least twice, right, to see how that plays out. Uh, it's very very impressive. Alexander Fister once again proves why he is at the top of the game, and you know, give him a few years, and he might supplant Steffenfeld. It's po anything's possible, folks. That's crazy talk. But I just love he is at the bleeding edge of this and I want to see how he continues to try to evolve the idea of melding really solid Euro gameplay with compelling, you know, not not award-winning, but interesting and compelling uh, narrative. And uh, Expedition New Dale is the latest and um, I, I, the one I've had the most fun with of, of these experiments of his so far. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything that bugs me. I will. I do have one complaint, actually. And I'm really surprised. He's missed one trick. In the previous Oh My Good expansions, Revolt at Longsdale and, what was it, uh, Journey to, or Escape from, or, or from Canyon Brook, the interesting thing was, those 
they, you know, they all serve the same function. Oh, you're going to play through six games, and every time a new mission, we're going to seed more stuff into the simulation. But they had a thing where it said, hey, you know what? If you just don't, wanna, you don't care about the story, here, follow these directions, and here's how you get the one big game. I don't know why, but the equivalent of those instructions are not here. I looked all over the place, and there's no, hey, now that you finished the campaign, here's how you can just jump into any chapter. Because I'm left a little in the dark. Um, once I've finished, and once I've added all of the different cards that come into the deck, if I go back to Chapter 6, am I supposed to take the Chapter 7 and Chapter 8 cards back out? Or is it okay if I just play them all? I, I don't know. Uh, is it just a matter of, oh no, you just play with everything turned on, and um, just pick a map, and uh, you know see how it works out? That would be my suspicion, and I suspect that would work, but I think it was a huge oversight that the developers did not include that information. One, for some of you, I know you're out there who don't care about the story at all and say, look, I just want the game. I just want you to tell me how can I just pick a map and then play it correctly with all the stuff. They didn't include that, and I think that's a huge oversight, especially because they did it right before. Um, yeah, but phew, boy. Otherwise, no. I mean, I already liked All My Goods a lot, and like I said, this very much improves it by making it uh, more forgiving, or more forgiving for the risk takers of the world. And I love taking risks. I love pushing my life. I love going for the big payday and then just wallowing in despair when it all blows up in my face, but knowing that I've still got a chance. All My Goods didn't necessarily allow for that. It was a bit more harsh and crushing. Newdale, like I said, I, it, it is the next step, both narratively and gameplay design wise. Don't get me wrong. I still love All My Goods, and that's a great little 20-minute game that's entirely contained in just a deck of cards, but this is a big, robust experience that is just wonderful. No surprise, Alexander Pfister, uh, he, he is on fire. And that is it, folks. That is the run-through for Expedition to New Dale. Thank you very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye